Welcome to my lecture online. Here we're going to learn how to convert from Cartesian to polar, to polar coordinates. But we have to be a little bit careful because there are four quadrants, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. I guess I haven't finished putting that on there yet. So this is quadrant three right here. And here we have the point in quadrant four. So when we use calculators, we have to be a little bit careful about the sign when we find the angle. Finding r is quite easy because all we have to do is simply take the square root of x squared plus y squared and we get r. But since we have to take the inverse tangent, and the tangent is typically hemmed in to being an angle between minus 90 and plus 90 degrees, we have to be careful about how we handle quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. And, uh, well, quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. And even quadrant 2, we have to be careful there as well. So, we'll see how that goes. First of all, let's do the easy one. In quadrant 1, we have a point that has an x and a y coordinate that's 4 and 3. To find r, we take the square root of x squared plus y squared, which is equal to 16 plus 9, which is 25. Take the square root, we get 5. But the angle theta, that's equal to the inverse tangent of y over x. y would be 3, x would be 4. So that would be the inverse tangent of 0 0.75. 0 0.75, take the inverse tangent, that gives us 36.87 degrees. 36.87 degrees. And if we want to convert that to radians, we know that 180 degrees is pi radians. So divide by 180, and we get approximately 0 0.2 pi radians. Okay. Now we go over to quadrant 2. Notice that we should get the exact same value for r. We get r is equal to the square root of minus 4 squared plus 3 squared. And notice the negative gets cancelled out when we squared. So again, we get a distance of 5 from the origin to the point. So we should always get that same distance. How about the angle? Theta is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of y over x. y in this case is 3 and x is a negative 4. So that gives us a minus 0.75. When we plug that into the calculator, 0.75 minus, we take the inverse tangent of that, we get minus 36.87 degrees. In other words, we get an angle in this direction. That doesn't work for us, so therefore we need to add 180 degrees to that. So in this case, we add 180 and we get 143.13 degrees. So this is equal to 143.13 degrees. We've done that by taking a minus 36.87 degrees and added 180 degrees to that to get 143.13 degrees. And you can see that does seem to be about right for that angle. Now we go to quadrant 3. Again, to get the magnitude r, we get r is equal to the square root of minus 4 squared plus a minus 3 squared. Again, the squares negate the negative sign, so we get a positive 5. What about the angle? Well, the angle theta is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of y over x. So in this case, we get y as being a minus 3 over x being a minus 4. Again, we get a positive value that gives us the inverse tangent of 3 over 4. So we get the same result that we have over there. So again, 0.75, take the inverse tangent. But again, we don't know, we don't, we do know that it's not going to be 36.87 degrees. We have to add another 180 degrees. So plus 180 gives us 216.87 degrees. So this is equal to 216.87 degrees. In other words, this was equal to 36.87 degrees plus 180 degrees. And now we we'll come to quadrant 4. Again, the, the distance r is going to be equal to the square root of 4 squared plus a minus 3 squared, which again is equal to 5. And the angle theta is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x. y is going to be a minus 3, x is 4. That gives us the inverse tangent of a minus 0.75. When we do that, again, we get a minus 36.86 degrees. So theta equals minus 36.87 degrees, which is indeed correct, because if we go in the opposite direction, 
a minus 36.87 degrees, we end up in the right location. However, we can also get the same thing by adding 360 to that. So plus 360, that gives us theta is equal to a positive 323.13 degrees, and that would give us the right answer in a positive direction. So it depends how you want to look at it. You can say this is equal to a minus 36.87 or a positive 323.13. If we want to convert those to radians, of course, we can take 143.13 degrees, 143.13, divide by 180, and that gives us about equal to 0 0.8 pi radians. Over here, when we take the angle 216.87 and divide by, whoop, divide by, uh, let me try that again. 216.87 divided by 180 gives us, uh, that's equal to 1.2 pi radians. And then over here, 323.13 divided by 180. That gives us, uh, let's see here, well, let me try it again. 323.13 divided by 180, that gives us about 1.8 pi radians. So here you can see that it's relatively easy to convert from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. You have to be a little bit careful about the angle. It's always a good idea to make a little diagram, show the x-y axis, show where the point lies, and then show indeed how you find the angle. And be careful with the calculator because it usually limits you to plus or minus 90 degrees when you're looking for the arc tangent of an angle. And that's how it's done.